All right, guys, how are you? Coach Dimitri here from Pure Motivation Fitness and from Pure Body Type Training. Um, I wanted to do something today, and I wanted to give all you viewers an easy way to um, plan your 2023 goals. When it comes to setting your goals, I think planning them from a standpoint of uh, fitness, nutrition, mindset, um, it all comes together, and sometimes it gets a little bit more challenging for people to do. And I've come together with a small, um, easy to follow and easy to understand. I'm going to share my screen right now. A little template planner that I've I, I got, I put together through something similar that I got help with, um, with my coach. And this is something that you can easily put together to see how your New Year's goals are going to be, what you want to plan for the New Year's, and also to kind of map out what you feel is, is challenging and what you feel is holding you back, okay? Um, if you want to download this, um, this planner, just send me a DM. I'm happy to send it. And if you're joining us live for the live um, call right now, let us know if it's live right now. And then if you can also let us know if you're watching from the replay, just hit replay, okay? I'm going to have my helper in the corner here to give us some feedback. So let's start off with this. Okay, so if we're if we're setting this up, especially for the members that are currently part of our program, you want to make sure you're keeping track of your workout stats and your data, okay? It's key to changes and improving your current fitness level. So the first thing you want to do is you want to create, is it set up properly? You want to create your vision and your new standard for your core identity. A lot of people will, you know, today's the 29th, of, of December. It's my wife's birthday. Happy birthday, Francesca. If you're watching, I love you. Um, but a lot of people will wait till the new years and say, okay, you know what? I'm going to start working out. I'm going to go hardcore this whole week, four or five days. The next week comes by and they go four, five, six days. And then they don't understand that your body will be tired. Your body will need time to recuperate. You will have stress that comes up from your family life, your personal life, your work life. And then what sometimes happens is you will often go really, really hard. And then after that, you're, you're notice that your consistency drops. Why? Because things get in the way. And if you don't map it out in general, you see, if you don't map it out in general, so you can kind of understand what's happening over the long term, what ends up happening is you get discouraged. And when you get discouraged, you start thinking, is this right? Can I do this? And then you end up saying, no, I'm not. So I'm going to go back and share my screen here. And the first thing you want to focus on doing is you want to set up your goals workout per week. Okay. So I'm going to pretend I'm a new client and I'm going to say, I want four workouts per week. Okay. I'm going to set this up for the month. I want 24 workouts for the month. And if I'm going to go for the year, I'm going to get my calculator out of here. Cause I want to be accurate. 24 times 12. We've got 288 goals. Okay. In terms of workouts for the year. Now, the in-body per month, this means how many times are you going to assess yourself? How many times are you going to body comp yourself? Will you be doing a body comp every week? Will you be doing it every second week? Will you be doing it twice a month? You need to outline this out from the start, because if not, you have nothing to stand by. So I'm going to say four, okay? So for our members in the studio, they know that if they use the in-body scanner, the in-body scanner gives you stats on body fat percentage, lean mass, fat mass. Um, segmental muscle tissue, basal metabolic rate, um, total body water, a bunch of stuff. You can follow a basic um, a body comp if you want. And all you have to do is just follow the body comp that is going to be weighing yourself and doing some measurements. Okay. Next, you want to look back and say to yourself, when am I going to compare these? When am I going to go through them? So you look at your actual workouts for the week. Now, I like doing these every 30 days versus at the end of three months because you got to go back and track and it's a lot more harder. So what you can do is just say, you know what? I'm going to look at my actual workouts per week. So 30 days from now, I'll go back to my calendar and I tell people it's good to have everything set up on camera. But if you're able to go back to like an old school calendar here and you can mark off the days that you've actually trained. So you can just put a check mark, a, a Nike symbol. You can put a happy face, whatever you want on the days that you trained. At the end of the month, if you want to go back and have a look, okay, here's an example. These are just check marks that I've completed certain tasks that I wanted to get done that day. If you go back and look at that, 
it's it's reinforcement, it's positive reinforcement, letting you know that you've done what you said you're going to do. Okay, we're going to go back to that screen I have here. So let's say you can compare at the end of your for your your month how many workouts you did per week three, how many for the month I did fifteen, um, how many in bodies did I do? I did two of them. Okay, and then you can even make this even as more organized and have a stats of how many workouts you did for the whole year. For members that are part of Pure Motivation Fitness or um, the online coaching for men over 40, you can easily know these stats from your app. The app that you use to log in to book for classes, the app that you use to book your workouts, it keeps track of all that. Next, you wanna look at your average workouts per month in the last three months. So look back right now, if you've been tracking, and so okay, October, November, December, what was my average workouts? If you don't know, typically the gym that you're part of should be able to tell you these stats. You can easily go to the gym and ask them. But if not, you can just track yourself. And then you can also look at blood work. Like when was the last time you had blood work done? A lot of times people don't get blood work done and they're not really sure um, of what's happening internally. Now, these are some of the goals that I set up for 2023 that are, that are, are in my eyes, the four most important ones that I set up. And then I have additional impact goals. So personal faith goal. This could be religious, could be mindset, could be personal. Um, you want to say why it's important for you. Okay. So if it's a personal faith goal and you say that you want to make a certain amount of time to pray every morning, or you want to have a certain amount of time for, um, you know, journaling, something that is important to you, write it down and then put why. If you don't have the why behind it, it's not going to be that strong. Personal fitness goal. Be clear and specific with both quantitative and qualitative goals, okay? So the difference between them is a qualitative goal is something based on a quality description. So I wanna feel better. I want to make sure that um, I, I wanna have more energy, okay? I wanna get better sleep. A quantitative goal would be, I wanna lose 3% body fat. I wanna lose um, you know, 20 pounds in total. So be very specific, but then write down why you wanna achieve these goals. Next, you want to look at family, uh, personal family goal. Why is this important to you? So it could mean booking a date night. It could mean taking a family trip every 30 days with the kids. It could mean watching TV at home or having dinner as a family night. Okay. And then personal food, nutritional goal. This is something that you want to log down that you feel is important. This could mean I want to food prep um, every weekend. This could mean I want to remove certain foods that are not healthy for me. This can mean I want to make sure that I'm having 25 grams of protein per day. Now, additional impact goals that I put here are going to be stuff that how big or small of an impact you want to have to make for everyone around you, your family, your coworkers, community. For me, this one's really big. I want to make sure that I can impact a bunch of people in my community. And I want to make sure I can impact people around the world. So I set specific goals on how I want to achieve that. Um, let me see here if I can minimize this screen here. No, you know what? I'll keep that as maximized. Um, and then you want to set up a sleep goal. So how many hours of sleep do you want to get and why? Role model goal. How do you wish to bless others um, through your blessed, motivated, and confident life? Is there something that you can project or give off to people to make them happier or healthier? Food prep, like I said, which days you're going to do them, what time, what hour of the week, who are you going to do them with, when you're going to start? Okay. Drug and substance goal. This is a very important one because a lot of people don't pay attention to this, but most of us have some form of bad habit that is keeping us back, whether it's drinking alcohol, cigarettes, whatever type of thing you're doing, um, whether it's just being around poor people that are negative and, and bring you down. You want to make sure that you can write this down as a goal of what you want to work on and remove from your lifestyle. And then also you want to look at a personal reward. How will you reward yourself at the end of each week, each month, each quarter for achieving these goals? And then also, how will you reprimand yourself? If you tell yourself, I'm going to have family time every week, and then you never spend it, then you put $20 in a pool, and at the end of the month, you take that money and you give it to your kids, okay? Next, we look at logging your daily lifestyle and non-negotiable checklists. So these are one to two things that you will guard your life with when it comes to areas of your life that are important. These are the, the main areas that I feel are strongest for most of our clients. And I got an example here below. So my mindset goal is to write my gratitude journal every morning, be silent for 15 minutes every day to meditate. Okay. Family goal. 
hide my cell phone at night when my family's around and book date nights for 2023. Exercise goal, change my workout routine. So that's something big for me. I've been training for 27 years. I need to change my routine now to something different. Set a new body calm goal for 2023, uh, written and show somebody. So I'm putting that it's going to be not only qualitative, but quantitative by letting someone know as well. Eating habits. Start logging food in my app. Increase my fats daily because I don't really go for a lot of fats. I go more high carb, high protein, and a bit of vegetables. Okay. Sleep. Be in bed by 1030. Lights out by 11. Very important for me. This would be probably my number one goal if I can hit over the first month of January. Personal development goals. What do you want to do to become better? What books do you want to read? Do you want to take a course? Do you want to change something with your relationship? Okay. Good habits. Positive um, energy on social media. So I want to post positive things on social media. I want to motivate everyone I come in contact with. And then bad habits. I want to stop comparing myself to others. And I want to block social media time each day. I think there's a lot of time in my day where I'll get a notification, something pops up, and I'll go through. And I spend a lot of time um, going through either different posts or looking at posts and looking at messages. And then I end up saying, you know what, there goes a half an hour of my time. So we're going to go to the next portion now. And the next portion is going to talk about your turn. So you're going to log down two things that you feel here are important to yourself and keep it. And again, if you want to copy this document, just send me a DM. I can send it to you. Just go here, file, make a copy and save it as your own. Okay. Now, body comp analysis tracking. So this is where you grade yourself on a scale of one to five to see what you feel you're struggling with or where you feel you're doing very well at. And a lot of times we don't tell ourselves to see where we're at so you can see if it's actually getting better or worse. So when it comes to nutrition knowledge, where do you think your knowledge is on this one? Is it a one, two, three, four, five? If it's a one, then you need to know you've got to do something about it. If it's a one, what are you going to do about it? Okay, what are you going to learn? What are you going to, which books are you going to read? Which podcasts are you going to listen to? Which coach are you going to find more information from? Um, how often do you weigh yourself? Is this something that you do regularly or not regularly? Remember, guys, we're looking at changing our physiques and we're looking at, you know, changing the, the entire look of our bodies. You can't do that unless you're keeping track of yourself and measuring yourself, especially if you do once a month, it's too late. Um, how often are you performing, performing food prep? How often are you measuring your waist, chest, arms, and legs? So if you don't have access to a funky machine and you don't have access to all the world's biggest, you know, computers and stuff, are you measuring your waist every few weeks and seeing where you're at? How often do you pre-plan your workouts in your planner? So are you telling yourself Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday are my workout days and Wednesday, Saturday are my off days? Are you doing that? If not, you're, you're going by reactive impulse every day and it's not going to help you out. And then how often have you asked for help from your coach, your club, your family? Do you belong to a fitness studio? Yes. For all the members of my studio, I'm going to challenge them this year and say, how often do you come to us for help? For all my clients that I coach online with my app, how often are you reaching out and asking questions? How often are you taking your phone and recording something and asking for help? You see a lot of people, um, a lot of people will say they struggle when it comes to health and fitness. And people will say that they struggle when it comes to getting results, but then they're not making the effort to actually um, reach out for help. And I always tell people what you don't want to do is you don't want to run away from your coach. You want to run towards your coach. Okay. So I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to go into my planner here. And the next part we're going to look at doing is going to your game plan for 2023. Okay, so this is something that I believe everyone should be working on in the mornings between half an hour to 45 minutes of deep work. Okay, and deep work meaning if you regularly wake up at 7 a.m. and you typically will um, wake up go downstairs, take care of the kids, the family, you make your coffee, you do your workout. This means stopping and waking up a half an hour earlier or 45 minutes earlier before anything. Typically, 5, 5, 3 is a great time. And focus on your big 
your big three goals, okay? You can only have three goals at a time. And a really big problem that I have is I often have a lot of goals, small goals that I try to get done. And then in the end, all these little goals, even though I get them done, don't amount to anything big. Whereas if I, if I took one big goal that would be something that's super hard to chomp on and I focus on that major goal, I probably get a lot more results with a lot of small areas in my lifestyle. So what's the one thing you're doing right now to work on yourself versus everyone else, okay? Write out your deep work here and choose three areas of your goals that are most important to you. So I'm using here an example of food prep, okay? So I'm gonna open this up here so you can see it. And for example, if someone said they needed help with food prep, their first goal would be make a food prep Sunday, Wednesday, non-negotiable, okay? That's their goal. That's what they're gonna focus on. Anybody who's watching right now, who's a member of our program, that does not do food prep, you will not succeed this year if you don't block out the time. I don't know how important this is. I don't know how I can stress it in any way, but just like you plan out the money you save in your bank account for all the business owners here, for the all the stock market guys, the guys are in crypto, the guys and gals, for the people who buy real estate, you put effort and time into doing that. If you want to look pretty, and a lot of the females who go to the salon, they want to get their hair, their nails done. And, you know, when they're going out, they go to get themselves done. You put time and effort into that. Well, how on earth will you be able to literally make meals in under five minutes like I do every morning, under five to six minutes when you don't food prep? So this morning I was coming here with my daughter and we were in a rush and I literally opened up three containers. We had pre-made rice we had pre-made chicken and some beef kebabs and i literally went scoop 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 i put some kebabs in my container i put some tomatoes and carrots and i'm done that's my food prep it took me six minutes to prepare three meals for me and my daughter today okay so now you have tactics after this one to five small mini things that you will do mini behavioral habits to achieve the outcome goal and guys this is where a lot of people struggle when it comes to understanding an outcome goal versus a behavioral habit. So the outcome goal here is to do food prep every Wednesday and Sunday. The behavioral habit are small things that I can do that I can check mark off each week, which will get and attain the large goal. So one, I can go shopping at the same time every week. That's easy. My daughter, my wife can come with me. Let's say we go Sundays at 12. I can bring a pre-made food list printed out. Simple. Okay. I can get one person to join me in preparing foods or call someone to tell them starting. So if you live alone and you don't have a family and you're like, Dimitri, all the videos you make are about dads and moms. And, you know, I'm single, I'm in school, I'm in university, I'm not married, I'm a bachelor, I don't have these people. Perfect. Pick up the phone, call your family member, call your mom, call your best friend and say, hey, I'm starting my food prep at 730. They'll be like, and? What'd you call me for? I just wanted to let you know. If you do that small behavioral habit, it's building up to the outcome goal you want. Take pictures of your pre-made foods and post them on social media. Send them to a friend. So boom, 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 boom. Every week I'm going to take pictures. I'm going to post it. Or I'm going to send it to my family. And then log a big smile and a check mark in your calendar that shows it's completed. There's something magical, guys, that comes with the calendar. You see this, all these check marks that are off. I'm not sure if you can see it right now because the screen you're viewing on is small. But if you look at a calendar and it's got all these X's on it, let's say it was to work out. And in a seven day you know, calendar, there's only two check marks and the rest five are X's. And the next week you have three check marks and you know four X's. The next week you only have two check marks, two, two, two. Well, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to tell you when you look at your planner, wow, I'm only averaging 2.5 workouts a week. That sucks. Now I know my problem is to get more affluent with my workouts. So I have three different areas here. First strategy, monthly goal, second strategy, third strategy. You can work on that. If you're stuck and you have questions, message me back. I'm happy to help you out. And then bottom here is a SWOT analysis. Yes, this is similar to you. Looking at yourself like a business, this is similar to you treating yourself 
as an entity, as an organization, as an actual living organization or, or entity that does have strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Now, I know this may sound weird because you're like, well, I do that with my business. I'm not going to do it myself. You should because we should sit down and write down what our strengths are. So what's working great with your current fitness program? Write about what you're best at, your unique habits, your resources, and how this will help propel you. Now, the whole point of doing this is to visually see what you're good at. You may not have lost 25 pounds in the last 12 months. You may not have dropped the percentage you wanted. You may not have bench pressed 350 pounds as you, as you try to. But you can log down here. I actively show up four times a week, train. I spend 45 minutes on weights plus 10 minutes cardio. I know how to lift properly and safely. And then what else are you good at? Um, I've gained strength on all my lifts. Something easy as that, okay? Weaknesses. What's not working well for your fitness program? Write about the improvements you need to make and why. Any resources you lack and how these may be affecting you. So one, I can put down here, um, spend more time on Olympic lifts. Okay, the next portion is my weakness is not going to bed at 10.30 p.m. And then I can put why, because I spend more time reading, planning too late, go to bed at midnight, okay? You see what I'm, I'm trying to get at? You want to write down, you want to be real with yourself, guys, especially clients of ours right now that are watching. I do not want this year to be another year that you get by. We have clients that are crushing it. We have clients that are getting by very well. And we have some clients that are not moving at the speed they should be moving because they're not taking action. And just like one of our clients said yesterday, the gym is like a job. Okay, Violetta, one of our clients that has uh, done amazing and gotten amazing results, mother of four, lost 11% body fat, transformed her physique. She said the gym is like a job. And if you can kind of understand what that means, not in a negative way, but it's like work. You, you've got to plan it in your schedule. You've got to make time to drive there. You've got to prepare things. You've got to bring your gym gear. You've got to make your food. You've got to be involved. You've got to measure yourself. You've got to check yourself. And if you're not doing that, you're not going to get the results you want. Okay. Last two areas are look for external factors. We want to look for opportunities. These are a list of people, the resources that are currently open to you opportunities you need to capitalize on and connections and contacts books videos you need to consume okay so these are things you need to look at so one for me is i'm going to look at more leadership books i'm going to read books on parenting with teenagers because i have a beautiful teenager sitting right behind the camera right now listening to this i'm going to look at more um information on testosterone and hormones and an opportunity. I'm going to network to plan more live events at my studio with my members. Okay. So these are things that I can stop and I can look at. And you know what? It's really good to do this with your business, with your family life, with your team, your partner, your spouse, and then threats. Now, this is a really important one. List any harmful habits, routines, people, and negative self-talk that you may have that can lead to keeping you from reaching your goals. Right off the hop, I'm not going to put names, but I'm just going to put bracket, dot, 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 comma, bracket, dot, 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 comma, bracket, dot, dot, dot. Those are three people I need to avoid. I'm not going to put their names down, but there's three people in my life that I want to avoid because they either bring me negativity every time I call and speak to them. They either doubt some of the things I want to do or they don't, I don't really feel they're in line with my vote, vision and goal. And if it means someone on your team that you work with that you feel is not 
believe in your vision and what you want to accomplish, then it's time this year to sit down with them and say, hey, this is where I'm at. This is where I want to get to. And I believe that you're not on the same bus. What can we do to help you, you know, understand if you want to be here or not? This can be with your marriage. This can be with your fitness program. This can be you with your coach. If you feel your coach is doing a great job training you, but it's not being hard on you when you make mistakes, it's your time to write down threats or things that you want to eliminate, okay? Um, those are the nice and easy things that I put together for you guys. I want to do a quick recap. We're going to talk about goals for 2023. You want, want to make sure you're logging and tracking your workouts. If you're not tracking your workouts, there's nothing to look back at, okay? You can't manage what you don't measure, guys. And as much as I want to hate saying this, if you're not stepping on the scale, measuring your waistline at minimum, looking at your clothes, if they fit you, you're not going to get results. You're just going to pay money to people. You're going to be searching Google, Instagram, all these you know, Instagram followers and trying to do what they do, but it's not specific, especially if it's not for your body type. Then you want to look at goal planning and writing out why. Once you start writing out why, you're going to feel the emotion build. For example, if it's a family goal and you start writing down two or three family goals you have and you put why, it's going to build that internal drive for you to build you to propel forward for your family. Additional impact goals we have here, we have things as your non-negotiable checklist, okay? Non-negotiable checklist that you're going to log down two things that you will not let slip when it comes to your, um, what is this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, eight habits of your lifestyle. These are mine right here. And then you're going to log in terms of, tell yourself between one to five, what you feel you're doing really well at. And then after that, you have three specific goals that you want to hit. Three goals could be one, for example, I'm going to say, if I'm a client that wants to lose weight and I'm a dad, I want to lose 20 pounds in six months. First goal. Now, what am I going to do as a tactic for that? One, I'm going to hire a coach if I don't have a coach. Or if I feel comfortable with my own knowledge, join a gym. Okay. Number two, train at 6.30 a.m. four days a week. Number four, body count my measurements every Sunday. Number five, take a picture every Sunday. Easy. If I can just keep doing those five things, I'll get my big goal. Number two is I want to, uh, I don't want to say improve my nutritional habits because that's not right. I want to eliminate sugar from my diet let's talk about this okay well you can't eliminate sugar totally or else you'll die so you go down to the bottom one you say um let's write these out so um i'm only let me zoom these in guys it's even better i'm only going to have a fun cheap sweet treat saturday at 1 to 2 p.m Notice how I've limited down to a time now. So if I want to have a cheat, okay, but it's at Saturday at one o'clock. Why? Because I want to earn it. It's midday and I'm only giving me that gap window right there. Okay. Um, let's say the goal is hit my, so eliminate. Okay. My second one is um, I'm going to stop going to take out during the week and ordering Uber Eats. This is not me, I'm just giving an example. The next one is I'm going to stop ordering coffee at Tim's because I always buy Timbits. True story. Number four, I can say um, I'm going to start using stevia as of today versus sugar. And number five, eliminate sugar. Oh, I got it. I'm going to stop hanging around with because they are bad influence. Okay, see how easy that was? Like, Setting goals is not hard, guys. It's putting the reasons to the goal and why. And that's where a lot of people struggle. Did I spell influence wrong? Mm, no. 
Okay. Um, and then after that, guys, you have your SWOT analysis, which is simply being straight open with yourself and telling yourself what you feel are internal factors that you want to work on that you're doing good at, what weaknesses you have or areas of opportunity, what opportunities you can you can move towards, how can you get help, how can you propel yourself forward, and then threats. What can you stop, eliminate, remove from your lifestyle and go from there? Hope you enjoyed this short um, little video. And I did it in 30, pretty much 30 minutes because I had a five minute break in the beginning. For any questions you have, please message me back. You can DM me. If you're going to be watching this message later on, uh, please let me know live. If you watched it live or replay, if you have any questions, put them in the bottom of the chat in Facebook, or you can just message me um need template and i'll send you the template that's it that's all take care have a happy new year and remember when it comes to health and fitness attitude is everything bye for now